Hi guys, okay, today we're doing quick socks. Um, the sock video I've already got on here is by far and away one of the most popular videos I have on YouTube. So I thought I'd show you a slightly different pattern. Um, this is by far and away the fastest way I know of how to make a pair of socks. Um, and it's just something a little bit different if you've you've made the other pattern as well. Um, to make these, you will need wool, um, yarn rather. Um, this is it, it's slightly varying thickness, but it's a DK basically. Um, you can use DK, chunky, Aran. You know, th there's no. It doesn't have to be DK. You can go up or down a couple of thicknesses without it causing any issues. Um, 24 peg round loom usually the smallest size in the standard round loom knitting sets scissors um, knitting hook darning needle and either a stitch counter or a pen and paper just to keep track of what you're doing okay we're going to start by doing a simple era So we just make our small slip knot. Use that to secure our yarn, and then we're going to e wrap out of the way. We're going to go around <coughs> and e wrap all of the pegs. Now I've got those wrapped, um, what we're going to do is, to start off, we're going to do a rib stitch for five rows. Now, I'm just going to push these stitches down so they're about halfway down the pegs. They just have to be perfect. But there we go, that's a bit more workable. Okay, so we're going to do five rows of rib stitch. Now, if you haven't done rib stitch before, don't worry. It's really easy. We're going to do a few to get you started. What you do is you e-wrap as normal on one, and then you hold the other one down and across and underneath. You always work in pairs with the rib stitch, and you pull this one up and over as you normally would. There we go. And then the one next to it, where you pulled it down in front, you're going to go over the a wrap stitch that's on the peg, hook over that bottom one and pull it up and through. So you've got a little loop. And then you're just going to lift it off and pop that new loop on the peg. Okay, so we're just going to do that again. So again, working in pairs, you e wrap and then pull down in front. You lift the first one up and over as normal. And then the second one, you come, go down, through, hook that one up, there you go, and then lift it off and pop that new loop over. Okay. And you're just going to keep going round and round, working in the round like this. And I want you to go around and do five full rows. And when you've done five rows of this rib stitch, I will meet you back here. Okay, now we've done our five rows in the rib stitch. What we're going to do is we're going to go on to a stitch that I've called a couple of different names and I've done it in a few different videos. Uh, brick stitch, S stitch, there's a few. Um, but we're going to go through it. So the important thing to remember here is instead of working to the pegs, we're now going to work to the spaces. It's just an easier way to keep track of where you are if you focus on the spaces rather than the pegs. Now, going into our first space, so this is our last peg, this is the first space, what we're going to do is we're going to come through, going to wrap around one stitch and then come back over the other. So you see where that is? And then we knit them both. Yeah. And then we move on to the next gap. And again, 
we come through, wrap around one peg, then back around the other. Yep. And then again, just knit them both over. So, get this to focus. <laughs> ah, there we go. So, again, we've done this one, we're now onto this gap. Come through, around, and back. Yeah. And then we knit them both over. One more time. So we're now on to this gap. So we've done one, two, three. So we're now on to this gap. And we're coming through, in front, around the back, in front of the one next to it, and then knitting them both over, yeah? And what we're going to do is we're going to keep going round and round, still working in the round, and what I want you to do is do that for 10 rows, so we're going to do, <laughs> we're going to do 10 of those rows, and then I want you to come back when we've done 10 and we will go from there okay we've now done our 10 rows in what we like to call the brick stitch or the s stitch um and now we're on to the bit that everybody gets a little bit jittery about but it is easy honest or it is if we do it step by step which is working the heel now to do this we're going to work 12 pegs okay now, if you've just finished your row of brick stitch, your yarn will be sitting here. All I want you to do is just pop an extra stitch in there and it'll just make the run into the, the heel section a bit easier. So just pop that stitch on and then we're going to count 12 stitches. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11 12 okay just double check we've got that one two three four five six seven eight ten, eleven twelve brilliant now what we're going to do is secure that there we're going to ignore the last stitch we did so we're going to leave two stitches on here and then all of the other ones we're going to knit off and we're just using a standard e-wrap for this okay So all of these are being knitted off. There we go. We're going to push them down. So we've got two stitches on peg number 12. Yeah. And all the others now down to one stitch. Now what we're going to do is that extra stitch there is going to become a turning point. So there's still two stitches on it. But then we're going to wrap back, wrap 11, which will take us back to our first peg. Yeah. There we go. Now again, like we did last time, we're going to ignore the last peg we wrapped. Yeah. And we're going to knit off all of the others that we've just wrapped. So what happens is we end up with a peg on each end that has two stitches on. So you've got two stitches on this one and two stitches on this one. There you go. And ten pegs in the middle, all with one stitch on. Now, as we did, we're going to use this as a turning point. We're going to come back. We're going to wrap right up to that peg with two on. There we go. And again, we're going to ignore the last peg we wrapped. So this time we'll end up with two pegs with two stitches on at this end and knit back to the point where we have one peg with two stitches on. So this end we have one peg with two stitches and at this end we have two pegs with two stitches, yeah? Let's move them down a little. You're going to start to notice a pattern developing here, okay? 
so we then use this peg again as that stitch we left on there as a turning and we're going to come back until we hit the other peg with two stitches at the other end and again we're going to ignore this one we're going to ignore the last one we wrapped so we end up with two pegs with two stitches at this end to match the two pegs with two stitches at the other end and there we go there's our two pegs with two stitches there yeah and again using this as a turning we're going to wind until we hit two and there we go mm -hmm. Those are our two pegs with two stitches. So we've wrapped to this one. We're going to ignore the last one we did. So we then have three pegs with two stitches at this end. And knit back. Until we hit the turn. So then we have two pegs with two stitches at this end. And three pegs with two stitches at the other end. Once again, use the last peg we wrapped as a turning point. We're going to come back until we hit our double wrapped ones. And then, once again, we're going to ignore this one. Oh, I always do that at some point. Now, let's rewrap. There we go. double check that so that will be three at each end so we ignore that one and that gives us three double wrapped ones at each end so we have one two three double wrapped single ones in the middle and one two three double wrapped at this end we're starting to get there so then we come back Now, you can see this is the start of our double wrapped ones. So again, we ignore this one. The last one wrapped, leaving four double wrapped at that end. And coming back to our turning point, where we have three double wrapped on this end. Turning point, come back. And again, ignoring this one. And we're now at the point where we have four double wrapped pegs on each end. Okay, this is our halfway point on this heel section. Now we have four double wrapped on each end. We're going to start decreasing those. So we're going to wrap back. And when we get to our double wrapped pegs, we're going to put a third stitch on them. So the only the first one we get to, we're going to wrap a third stitch on there. And then we're going to take the bottom two stitches together and wrap them, knit them up and over as one. And then we're just going to knit back. Leaving this time four double wrapped stitches on this side and now three on the other. And then we come back from the one we knitted. We don't wrap that again. So we, we now have one stitch on this one. And then we come back along. And the first double wrapped peg we come to, we pop a third stitch on. And like the other one, we take the bottom two together, knit them up and over. And then we knit back until we get to this single stitch. And again, this time we turn, we wrap all of the single stitch pegs and the first double stitch peg we get to. Knit those two up and over and knit back until we reach our single stitch peg. 
once again return from that single stitch one we come along all the way back reach our the first double stitch peg we get to knit that up and over bottom two together and all the rest of them back along until we get to our single stitch and you can see the pattern that this is going in now we then wrap back first double wrap peg we come to wrap a third on both bottom stitches up and over and then all of the ones back until we hit single stitch peg and again wrap these ah that's twice i've done that on this video now <laughs> Okay. Here we go. Once again, putting a third stitch on the first double wrap when we get to knitting back until we hit a single wrapped peg and then turning uh, now you see we're down to our last double peg on this double stitched peg on this side but that's fine Go. And with this one, we come all the way back. And take all of these off. And that is the end of our heel section. And if you look at the top, you get this weird sort of little pocket bit, which is actually the heel in there now. Now, we are back to having a single stitch on every single peg. And what we do at this point, it runs off the back of that one. One of the reasons we also put an extra little stitch in this one before we started is because now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to those brick stitches or those s stitches whatever you want to call them and we're going to start going around and around again and you want to do 10 rows okay so we're going to do another 10 rows in brick stitch what i want you to do and it feels a bit strange but it only feels a bit strange on this on the first stitch because we're coming from here we're coming through this gap because remember on these stitches you work to the gaps so it feels a bit like you're wrapping it all the way around, which you kind of are. So we're coming off here, we're going around, and then back here. Yeah. And then again, just working as we did before, around and back. And just keep working in the round until you've done 10 rows. Yeah, when we've done another 10 rows of brick stitch. Then come back and I will meet you here. Okay, now we've done our 10 rows back in the, the brick stitch. Um, we're almost there, guys. Okay, 
again we're going to do the little thing because you can see because of the way that that little brick stitch works you can see where the yarn's coming from just to neaten everything up we're just going to pop an extra stitch just a standard e-wrap on the last peg there we go it just keeps things nice and neat now all you're going to do from here is five rows of standard e-wrap okay so again continuing to work in the round just a very plain e-wrap and what you want to do is just do a simple five rows of this and once you've got those five rows done i will meet you back here and we'll get the project finished okay so we've done our five rows <coughs> in a standard e-wrap and now it's time to get this thing off the loom and finish making it up so i'm just going to run my yarn all the way around a couple of times just to make sure i've got enough working length on it just to get a mark of where to cut it there we go And there we are. Now, where have I put my darning needle? There it is. Okay, um, I've jumped ahead of myself a little bit. Um, we've done our um, five rows of e-wrap, and now we're doing a very basic drawstring cast off. We've made sure we've left ourselves a good amount of working yarn, and then all you do is you go from your last peg around each peg in turn, just coming down and through the pegs like that okay so literally just with the darning needle and you're going to go all the way around every peg until you're back at the last peg so I will let you go and do this and when you've got all the way around your whole project I will meet you back here. Okay, do make sure when you are back at your last peg, you do remember to do that one as well. Because I know a couple of people have made that mistake and you, you end up with one not done. Okay, once you're at this point, where we've done that little drawstring cast off around every peg, we just need to take it off the loom. Now people, <laughs> if you've done knitting with me before, You'll have heard me say this, but people do tend to panic at this point because it feels as if the stitches are very loose when you're unhooking them like this. Don't worry, it's fine. <laughs> it will all come together. It will be fine. Okay, and that is our sock off of the loom. Now, what you do is to turn this inside out. So, just quickly flip it like that. There we go. Give it a little shake. Now, all you're going to do now is just take this yarn and just pull. And it will close up the toe of your sock. Now, sometimes you get a weird little hole in the end so just make sure you pull it <coughs> nice and tight and then what I tend to do is I come sort of to the stitch immediately opposite the one at the end if you like just catch one of those ones opposite it there and just pull the yarn through that way and it just helps keep that secure and then I can just go through and tie A small knot in this you don't need to do any particular knot as long as it's a knot it's fine <laughs> I'm going to pull that nice and tight is that nice and tight yeah. yeah it is and then just snip the end off there we go then I'm going to come back to the end where we started because we still have should still have where's it gone there it is <laughs> we should still have our little loose bit of yarn here got a bit of a 
I'll loose one there. It'll tension itself out. It's a good thing about knitting. If the tension isn't perfect, it's fine. Run it through the wash. It'll put it through a washing machine. Fine, it'll sort itself out. Okay, so we've still got our little slip knot in there. Just pull that out. And again, we're just going to tie a knot in the top. So yeah, just tie the knot in the top and then I look at one of these little runs of stitches and I just thread the needle through and use this to, to work the end of the yarn in. Just give that pull and snip the end. And that's it. That is our, our sock. Just flip it the right way in. Go back to the beginning of this video, make another one. Um, so you have a pair. And that is it. Now these are very elastic. So this size, I'm a UK size 5. And this fits me perfectly. Sometimes I'm a 6. But this sort of size will fit anywhere from a size sort of UK size 3 up to about a 7. If your feet are a little smaller than that, or you make them for someone smaller, just take a row of the brick stitch out the foot section. Obviously if your feet are a lot bigger... Add a row or two in. It's you know there is a lot of stretch in them. There, it's a very forgiving pattern. And as I say, these are so so quick to make, and you can make them out of any sort of size yarn. Um, they do have a slight sort of crocheted look. I think you know you can see that pattern in them, but they are still so thick and warm, even out of um, even out of thinner yarns and because you've got the flat e stitch on the heels and on the toes having that slightly sort of lacy pattern if you like um doesn't affect the comfort of them so there you go enjoy <laughs>